Hey everybody, welcome back to our month of Azure Databricks presented by Advancing Analytics. In this episode, what we're going to look at is how you go about mounting some storage to Azure Data Lake Gen 2 using Azure Databricks. Now there are a whole load of different ways that you can connect to various different storage options using Spark and using Databricks. You've got two options that you can see available here. Where we've got an external file system, we can either do something like a direct DBFS mount straight to an option like Azure Data Lake. You can also do this for things like blob storage as well, or you can do an encode connection. Now what we're going to look at is actually doing the first one there, which is using a mount point to connect directly um, via DBFS straight into our data lake. So to get this set up, you need to do quite a lot of configuration. And it, to be honest, it's quite tricky to get a lot of this stuff done. There's some nuance and some trickiness that you need to get over, but we'll try and talk, talk about it here. So you've got an option, you've got a video to refer back to. So first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to start creating that mount point. We're going to need a service principle. So a service principle is how Azure creates a managed authentication, um, sort of as a, a managed service account that you can use to authenticate with the files that are in your blob storage. I'm sorry, in your data lake. We're then going to need to create a secret key for it, a primary key for that service principle. You're going to need to know the directory ID. Now this is the um, the Azure tenant. You can find this in the options um, when, you, when you look at your subscription. We need to know your data lake name. We need to know the name of your file system as well. So what you've called your data lake um, file system. Now for Gen 2, you've got a couple of different options. You've got the object store and you've got the hierarchical store. So what we're doing here is we're using the hierarchical store, which works very much like Data Lake Gen 1 did, and it gives you a more fine-grained file permissions. So that's how we want to work. We're going to use that style. Now to set this up, you need quite a bit of code. So this next screen is a whole load of PySpark of what you need to enter to, to set up this mount point. So first thing that we have up there is we need to specify the service principle ID, the service principle ID, um, the key and the directory ID. Then the rest of it we're just going to uh, manually do here. So the directory looks like that. It needs to be expressed in this format. Rather than just writing that whole thing out, we can just use a little bit of Python to um, pop our directory ID into the structure that it wants. We then pass it a load of configuration options. And then finally, we use a dbutilsfs function to um, create a mount. And that's that last bit down there. We specify the source. So what you have there is the, um, the data lake file system name and then the data lake name. So file system at data lake name dot dbfs dot core dot windows dot net. And then the mount point. Now, this is what you want to call it. Standard convention is forward slash MNT forward slash something. So as this is a lake, we're going to say lake. And then we just say these are the config options that you have. This is what we want to work with. Now it's worth pointing out that this isn't how you should work. You shouldn't be specifying um, any keys in sort of plain text inside a notebook. What you want to be using is scoped credentials that you can then pull back through. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can do this. So I've opened up my Databricks workspace here on a notebook I've already created, which is a going to attempt to connect us into my Data Lake Gen 2 account. So if we have a quick look at what I've got in that Gen 2 account, um, this is set up. All I've got in here currently is a single file which has a small slice of data which comes from the um, New York taxi cab data. First thing we want to do, we're just explicitly calling out that we need these options again, yeah? So we need the service principal ID, the service principal key, a directory ID, the lake name, and the lake um, system name as well. Okay, and now as I mentioned before, what we want to do is we don't want to do this, right? This isn't the right approach. We don't want to be specifying our secure keys, our service principal IDs in plain text. Because if you've watched a previous video, then you'll know that we need to be version controlling this. And we definitely do not want passwords to be ending up in Git, right? That's never a good idea. Okay, so... Assuming that we've actually gone through the process of getting our credentials into um, into a scope credential, then we can do something like this. So what we have here is all of the code. I'm going to have a look here, and I'm just going to pull back um, the secret key here. So if I try and run this, if I add this one in here and run this cell, 
what you'll see is when it goes away to get that scope, it's going to come back with this term redacted. So now that this scope has been loaded, I can't do anything to actually go back in here and see this. Now, now there are some hacks to get in and actually see what these credentials are, but for the most part, they're just going to show you up as redacted. It's pretty much as secure as, you know, somebody trying to read over your shoulder. They're not going to be able to read over your shoulder, but if they really wanted to get in and see what these keys are. So running this, I'm going to just create a, um, I'm going to attempt to create the mount. So I've specified here my service principal ID, and these are all coming from my predefined um, secrets. I'm specifying that directory, so it's going to take that directory ID, it's going to pass that through into here. I'm specifying all my configs, and now the actual links to my lake are here. So I called my file system Delta Lake, and I called my data lake actually Delta Lake as well. So I'm working with Databricks Delta a lot, so Delta Lake is the obvious choice for a name there. And I've got this back here, true. So that's saying that I have created a mount point now. One thing that I didn't mention, but that we can do as well, is we do have um, dbfs help. So if we run um, dbutils.fs.help, we can see all the mount options that we have here. Scrolling back down. Now that we've created a mount, we could do something like this. We could say, okay, well show me all of the files that are currently in that mount. And this is going to do, it's going to recurse over that. So what we can see here is our mount dash lake, and we've got that small slice that we saw before. It's a relatively small file, and that's what it's called. Now what I can do is I can read this into a data frame. So I'm just saying df equals spark.read, option infer um, schema, and that this has a header. So it's going to do two jobs, one to infer the schema, one to actually read the data in. That data is currently held in my mount point on my lake, small slice last thing I want it to do is just display that so now that's read that data securely from my data lake and then passed it back to me if I wanted to I could cut the I could cut the permissions for this service principal and this would just stop working if you need to unmount dbutils fs.unmount I'll run that one and that will remove that connection and I won't be able to run that again now it's important to call out that if you create a mount point on your workspace, under that cluster, everybody has access to it. So anybody who can see that mount point, they have access to be able to go in and interrogate the data that exists in your data lake. So it's one to be aware of. If you need to have more fine-grained permissions, more granular permissions, then you need to do direct pass through credentials and don't do mount points. But we'll look at that at another time. Okay, so that was how you create a mount point to Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. And don't forget to give us a like and hit subscribe on YouTube so that you never miss another video. Thanks very much and we'll see you in the next one.